All right, so in this video, we're working on a little two-gang switch. Uh, basically, the two switches are going to control a center light. Um, as you see on that kind of on that wooden stud, it says S1 center light. So that just means it's going to be a single pole switch uh, for the center light in the uh, in the room. And then there's going to be a another switch, and it says S1 recess. If you look real quick, and that one's going to be a single pole switch for a recess light. So kind of jumping into it right here, you see me nailing in some of these uh, ideal cable stackers. Um, they're pretty good. Uh, the only reason why we have to use them in this circumstance instead of, you know, just slamming a, a staple home is because of, you know, there's so many wires there. You have to use these. You can't, you know, you could, I guess, put, you know, two wires underneath a red staple and put it side to side. But it's going to be so close to the edge of the stud that you're pretty much just asking for trouble. So... I'm putting three of them. Realistically, you probably only need two, but I like to kind of go overkill with these things. Um, and the only reason why I do go overkill with them uh, is because it holds the wires tighter, uh, you know, versus it being a little looser. So, so you know, it kind of tends to, the wires tend to, for some reason, they get really loose in the middle and they kind of push out towards the edge of the stud. And you're kind of just asking for a sheet rocker to miss the stud, put a screw through it, and then you're, you know, you're never going to find that. Um, so yeah, I'm putting, you know, each little kind of like slot in these cable stackers gets two wires instead of one. Um, they are, you are able to double stack them so they can fit, you know, eight wires inside them. And it's pretty convenient, especially, if, especially you know, if you, if you have a lot more wires, you know, in this circumstance, I only have five. But, you know, if you did add more, they're really, really convenient. But yeah, I'm just right now, I'm just kind of making sure that everything gets lined up properly sometimes i swear i do it all the time uh, basically you know you put the last wire at the edge of the slot and then you go to put it um basically you know try to make it even with the other ones and you end up screwing it up so you got to pull that wire back out and put it in the the right way to end up getting it to lay flat and it's just a pain sometimes but yeah now i'm breaking open the box uh this is the way my method i like to do it um some people just like to you know basically just slam the wire in there and sometimes you know if the plastic's weak enough it'll break the tab open but um for these boxes i don't know where they're from whether they're from granite city or uh, maybe they're from uh electrical wholesalers i'm not really too sure but they're pretty stubborn so you know the hammer and the screwdriver pretty much prize them open and you can see how hard it is <laughs> i'm pulling the wire super super hard to try to get it in uh the clamp but uh you know sometimes it's a little difficult um, so these boxes, you can put two wires in per clamp, uh, but what I like to do, and you're going to see it um, in this application, is that I put, you know, one wire per clamp so far, you know, and then towards the end, I like to put, uh, you know, the last clamp usually has uh, two wires in it, and that's just my preferred method. Uh, there's nothing really, like, there's no real reason why I do that, but just, I don't know, I think it just looks nicer, really. Um, this it, it's not like it's not like it's a code violation or anything you know but it's just something that you know I like doing and yeah now I'm trying to get all the slack inside the box um our inspector does not want to see any uh any sw like slack or like I guess you could call them service loops some guys call them or you know or uh I don't know what other people call them just we just call it slack but um the inspector doesn't want to see any slack and that's for you know purposes of not being supported and um, damage to the cable so I get rid of all the slack and if there is some extra slack I usually kind of just push it up above the two by fours and then again you know once you have all these cable stackers in there you're never going to be able to pull that slack anyway so it's kind of redundant um, to do it but it's just been such a habit you know for me before I've always done it that way to leave slack and stuff and then you know the inspectors didn't want to see it so I kind of just stopped doing it so it's kind of a habit but I'm trying to trying to fix that but yeah so now this is kind of what the box looks like you know you got one two three four five wires so I was correct you got five wires and uh, you know now you got to start cutting them in so my preferred method of cutting them in is you know using a utility blade and the reason why I like you using a utility blade rather than uh you know your traditional you know nm stripper is just because just I don't know for me it's just faster like it's so much faster for me to just slice the insulation a little bit pull it and then that's it it's done um, whereas the nm stripper you kind of gotta 
you know, or the Romex strip, but you got to, you know, pre-measure it before it goes into the box and then use the stripper, uh, cut the insulation, and then, you know, do that five more times. Whereas this method, you put all the wires in the box, you strip them with a the knife, and then you're done. And that's it. I mean, it's very, very simple. So, yeah, you can see me cutting the cable right here down the middle. And look, oh, man, I probably just upset a lot of people doing that. Yeah, I cut across the sheath. And no, I'm not cutting it into the conductor. Um, I'm barely, barely, barely. And if you get good at it, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll realize how fast it is. Um, I'm putting barely any pressure on that blade to cut through the, uh, you know, the, the white insulation of the wire. Um, it's not cutting into the conductor, but you, the only stipulation is you have to use like a really sharp blade because if you use a dull blade and then you just try, you know, not putting any pressure on it, um, it's going to end up cutting through the, ins uh, cutting through the wires insulation and hitting bare conductor. And you don't want to do that because, well, in this application, you're not using any arc faults or whatever. But I mean, if you were to use, you know, like an arc fault and the neutral touch the ground, uh, you're going to trip the breaker out all the time and you're never going to find it because such just like a small little tiny nick. Uh, but yeah, in this circumstance, you know, you still got to be careful. No matter what, you got to be careful with it. But yeah, look how quick it goes. I mean, I'm already on the, the fourth wire pretty much and, you know, it's just super, super efficient. But I don't think I explained uh, what's going on with the you know how why I, I put a little tiny piece of Romex on the edge of that um, of the hot wire and oh yeah here you go so it says recess switch leg right there so the reason why I do that is just a uh, just for like labeling purposes and able to keep track of things I mean I guess you could just write on the wire you know on the insulation part itself on the cable and then you know look at it that way but this method is just so much better because you know which ones are your switch legs and then you know which ones are your feeds so it really keeps everything pretty simple at least I think it does uh, but a lot of guys I know they don't really put tags on things um, but the, also the benefit to putting tags on things is like let's say for some reason you go into this you know into this two gang box and you're having issues with the circuit uh, right away you automatically know okay this is my recess switch leg and this is my you know center light in this circumstance realistically I'm assuming it's probably just gonna be like a, a hanging pendant or something I don't, I'm not really sure but you already know which your two switch legs are so you can just automatically assume that the rest of them are feeds or it feeds and feeds out um, so it just makes troubleshooting really really simple when you label everything and you know we've come into a lot of circumstances where these boxes had all labels in them and troubleshooting was just so easy you don't have to wring any of the wires out you don't have to try to you know figure out which one's the switch leg it just goes so fast but yeah you see how I got a quarter inch of uh, insulation sticking through the box um, that's a code requirement you have to have it um, the only downside I guess you could say they stripping with a knife is the you know the, the, the sheathing on the cable kind of you know it looks a little frayed kind of doesn't really look that nice but as like an NM stripper would make it nice clean cut but I don't know I guess it's all preference really but yeah so this is my second method here um, to cutting in the box I like to fold all my hot and neutral wires out of the way and then go straight to the ground wires. So I fold them right over the box. Sometimes, um, depending on if it's a three gang switch box, or if it's a four gang switch box, or even a five gang, I'll just take a big screwdriver, pound it into the stud, and then fold all my wires over that way. But in this circumstance, you know, it's only five wires, so it's not really that bad. So here I am, I'm sticking all the grounds to the back of the box, as tight to the back of the box as I possibly can. And that's really important for trying to keep a really neat box. Uh, if you don't tuck those wires to the back, it's just going to create a massive, massive rat's nest in there. And I forgot to say, too, that all these switches in this uh, building are all getting uh, dimmers. So you're never going to fit a dimmer in there if, it, you know, if it's a rat's nest. And another thing that a lot of guys, you know, will comment is that, you know, I'm not using like a Buchanan style connector, which is just a, it's just a copper crimp pretty much. You, it's, it's copper with a little, almost looks like a ferrule. And you take the you know special crimping tool and you crimp it. Um, for, for me, I just think the wire nut's just a better connection. Um, you know, especially with the way those grounds are pre-twisted right now, they'll never come apart. But with these ideal tan red wire nuts, I mean they're the they're the best in the game. And you know, it just makes a world of a difference this way. 
So I prefer I prefer doing it that way. And then look how clean that looks. See how nice and clean to the back of the box, beautifully twisted, um, never going to come apart and never going to cause any problems. That's the way it should be. Uh, you shouldn't have a rat's nest. You shouldn't have, you know, all the wires all over the place. I mean, that's going to be your start of the box. So that's the, I mean, that's the, the way I like to call it. It's the start of the box. Your first, you know, wires that are going to go to the back is going to be the grounds. So now you see me folding back all these neutral wires here. And again, uh, it's just one circuit in this box. And no arc faults on this circuit. This is commercial. And yes, like I said before, it is kind of a residential application. Uh, wooden framed and everything but you know sometimes you have those kind of jobs and now we're pushing the neutrals all the way to the back of the box as well this is the second step um, in cutting this box in so these neutral wires have to be as tight as possible to the back of the box you know and the best part about folding the wires all the way to the back and kind of like curving them like that is um, you get you know you get your six inches sticking out of the box which is a code requirement but um you also you have plenty to work with you know if you ever have to you know obviously have a lot more wire in that box instead of just minimum but you know try to try to make it easy and serviceable for the next guy you know especially when we got to go add dimmers in this thing and you got to tie in the neutral for the dimmer uh, depending on what system they get you know it requires a neutral so you know it's going to make it really easy pull a neutral out tie it in and that's it done and there are, even might even be an occupancy occupancy sensor in here or I don't even know what's going on in this room but you know just make it so it's serviceable just make it so it's easy and here I am lining up all the neutrals and gonna give them pre-twist now look how tight I'm twisting these wires okay and I, I'm pretty sure I purposely you know put the put the camera in front of the wires while I was pre-twisting it to show you that is what a proper pre-twist um, wire nutted joint should look like there should be no you know stray strands uh, in this case you know solid conductor um, kind of just hanging on for dear life that is the the right way to do it so it never comes apart it's never ever going to come apart and then as you see I'm really trying to push the conductors to the back and that is the most important step because you the bottom the bottom kind of gets you know it's right now it's a little loose and the wires aren't really as tight as I want them but you know as I start to line them up and there you go that's what you want so now I'm gonna pick out the three next hot legs so I'm gonna do all the feed ins and feed outs um, I'm pretty sure that this whole floor all the lighting was on one circuit so you know you're gonna see have a lot of feed in feed outs um, I think the whole building on the second floor or technically this is the first floor because uh, there's a basement underneath us uh, I think it drew like maybe four amps so you know running two circuits for the lighting just didn't really make any sense and yeah I'm stripping the wire with a pair of linesman pliers and I don't know if I talked about this previously but this is my method of doing it I've done it this way forever uh, the reason why I do it this way is because I don't have to carry around another pair of strippers it just doesn't even make sense you know why carry around two tools when you can carry around a pair of linesman pliers especially these uh, Knipex or Nipex or however you want to pronounce these things uh, they're the best pliers in the game uh, nobody else makes a better plier than them and they're razor sharp so you know you can you can strip any really size 14 12 10 conductor with these things no problem uh, the only thing you gotta watch out for really is you know nicking the the copper with it depending on how tight you know you're squeezing the pliers but I've never ran into a problem where I've done it because I'm just so used to doing it and then look how nice that is again I'm cranking it down really cranking that uh, these wires down and look how tight that is never ever going to come apart no matter what's going to happen, if even if the wire nut fails, and that's what I like to you know explain to everyone, if I'm working with like a new guy or something, or you know apprentice or something, um, you know, and they're first starting out, I like to say that if the wire nut fails, you know, you still have that those wires are twisted so damn tight that they're never going to come apart. So obviously, yeah, you're gonna see some issues when you go into that box. You know, the wire nut's gonna fall right off, but those connections are gonna stay intact and not gonna come apart uh, and that's a really big safety issue too you know you have to do it this way and you can't really do it any other way 
But just look how nice those two wire nuts are sitting in there. This box is a ton of room, ton of room in this box. And now I'm bringing down the switch legs. I'm gonna slide that uh, little, you know, Romex tag that I put on there. And the, the, it doesn't serve any other purpose of just labeling. The, you know, there's no, there's no nothing else behind it besides that. And the way the particular uh, instructions and the specifications of this building, uh, what they wanted for switches was the recess light switch all the way to closest to the door, and then the center light switch on the right side of the door. Or I should say towards the right of that switch. You know, it's only a two-gang switch, so that's the only way it can go. Uh, but yeah, so now I'm folding the wires up, and look how clean that is. You can read the label, so when an inspector or anybody walks by, and you, you know, for whatever reason, and he sees, you know, your switch box, he knows that it's done clean. He knows that he doesn't have to worry about the connections and, you know, if you did it right or not, whatnot. He can see it. He knows you took pride in your work. And uh, this is my method right here. I just take a little bit. See, I just take a little bit of the wire towards the edge. I just, you know, I cut it a little more. You know, it depends on how long it is. And then I just do a couple twists. That's it. And that all that does is just hold the edge of that. See how the other wires are nice and straight? And then I fold it up to make sure that, again, that it fits nicely so the router from the drywaller doesn't hit it. And simply that's it, really. I, I try to fold the label, make sure you can read it. Take, you know, take pride in your work. Make sure it's clean. And look how nice that box looks. Plenty of room, and it's a job well done. And then I'm going to just show you a little overview of what the wires look like on the finished result. And look how, look how nice those are. I'm going to fix them a little bit, straighten them out to make sure nothing happens. And that's it. I mean, simply, that's how you cut in a two-gang switch, and that's how you do it the right way. You know, in this circumstance, it had five wires, but it, even if you had six or seven wires, it doesn't matter. This is the correct way to do it.